So did you watch the uh, Golden Globes? No, I had to. I had to leave out. Did you see any of the clips though? The the Donald Glover speech? No, but I'm happy that he won for Atlanta. Although I didn't get to see the show yet. You didn't get to see the show? No, I heard it's great though. It's good. I mean, I've had arguments with with my employees in the, in okay. the office. I haven't that. seen it yet, so um, I can't comment. I think on. it's good. I appreciate that it's there. I felt like. It, it it just could have been so much more and the the script itself didn't go as far as it could have because it didn't like there are certain episodes that's just nothing happened <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like you start you watch the beginning you get to the end and you're like nothing happened mm -hmm. and there was a lot of loose ends that never really got tied up and, and so forth but it got renewed and i mean it won a golden globe clearly it's going to keep going for a little while so it is what it is. But the one thing about uh, that everyone focused on was when Don Glover won, he shouted out the Migos. I think he's just trying to be funny right there. Come on. Well, Dad and Bougie is the best song ever. Come on. Best song ever. And in he's fact, just being funny. Uh, when he did his uh, post uh, interviews, he said that the, the Migos are the new Beatles. Hmm. Now, the Migos did have a cameo on Atlanta. Okay. One of the episodes, they, they showed up. So, Bad and Bougie being the, the best song ever. That was just some funny, she, that was just a funny thing to say at the Golden Globes. He got a chuckle out of it. That's not supposed to be taken seriously, come on. But he went on to say that the, the Migos are the new Beatles. I, I don't think he's being funny. I don't, I don't think he's, he's... I think saying Bad and Bougie, that particular song, that was funny. Now, are the Migos the new Beatles? That might could be debatable upon, upon certain people's, you know. I mean, how many hit records? Perspective. Are That's what I'm saying. Like, here's the thing about the Migos. It seems like, for me, every time they come with a hit, I don't know it's them. Uh, you can't tell quite. I didn't either. know Bad and Bougie was the Migos. A bitch is bad and booty. Because they all sound like all these new motherfuckers that come out, they all sound alike to me. Well, they all sound like the Migos who started it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. So that's what it is. All I'm saying is a lot of times I'm like, oh, that's the Migos? Like, oh yeah, I kinda like that song. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's cause there's three of them and this I don't know, but like a lot of times I don't I can't just hear a record and be like, oh yeah, that's the Migos. Like I'm I just thought that was some new motherfuckers right there. Like, I might have just figured out that, like, you might have just told me that that was the Migos. I know the Bad and Bougie song, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, um, went, the song went to number one right afterwards. Good for them. They got like 10 million streams, like, right after that. You know what I mean? That. Yeah, they got a lot of hit records. They got a lot of hit records. And Quavo in particular, who's like the, the guy who does most of the choruses. Okay. Yeah, well. The hit records by him, you know, with the group and he goes and does this, you know, cameo shit, or he just kills it. He's like the new Nate Dog. Without singing, though, right? He kind of sings. Hmm. It's interesting comparing them to the Beatles, though, because that that really shook up the the thing. Because don't shake me up. Well, so you don't like the Beatles at all? No, it's not that I don't like them, but again, I don't hold them in the same esteem and regard that white people do. John Lennon? I don't hold them, them, in the same esteem and regard as white people do. John Lennon was, you know, an insightful person and, you know, he has some deep lyrics and all of that, but, you know. I mean, there's songs like Let It Be. Great song. Um, what, what, what was that one? Dun, dun. They got great songs. As, again, I'm gonna Imagine. Like, you want to sound Imagine? Imagine there's no heaven. Like See, there's a... Again, there's two different worlds, B. There's the black world and there's the white world. Okay. In the white world, the Beatles, ha, ah, is the fucking shit. Elvis, ha, ah, is the shit. In the black world, the Temptations is way fucking better than the Beatles. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, all right. Beatles. Okay. These motherfuckers are copying our fucking people, and now you want to put them on a pedestal again. Like... Get the fuck out of here. Wait, you think the Beatles copied black artists? Absolutely. They'll tell you. They looked up to fucking 
blues motherfuckers and all well, that type well, of soul artists and all that I type mean, of shit, I mean, just Rolling, like your boy Elvis. The Rolling Stones definitely did. Yeah, like the who, Stones, all of them, all of those English motherfuckers, all of their shit was based off of black music, and they'll tell you it was. So, are there any white artists that you hold in high esteem? Did I hold in high esteem? High esteem. Are there any white artists at all? Wow, that's a good That's a good question, question isn't it? Okay, so we've already had the Eminem discussion, right? So we'll we'll just we'll just throw that out there. So and let's just let's just even throw hip hop out of the equation. Mm-hmm. You know, let's just let's just say fuck hip hop, because at the end of the day, I know that you you love music, not just hip hop. Mm-hmm. So let's just say let's look at the, the, some of the biggest white artists. Bob Dylan. And, Bob Dylan. I do not hold him in high esteem. I'm not a huge Bob Dylan fan. You see what I'm saying? Okay, okay, they but that's, fucking love Bob Dylan. People love, well, an older generation loves Bob Dylan. Like, they act like he is, you know what I mean? I've never been a Bob Dylan fan. What about the Eagles? You know, I used to kind of like the Eagles when I was young, but again, the Eagles are I can name, you know, 10 black groups from that era probably that were better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Well, I'm not, I'm not okay, so like, for example, like Hotel California. Don't you think that Great was a dope song. song? I love that incredible song. Incredible song. Yes. Love it. We're not going to feel like, hell yeah, Elton John. Like, get the fuck out of here. None of them. David Bowie? Absolutely not. He was horrible. He was he horrible? He had one fucking song, maybe two, that black people fuck with. Let's Dance and... Uh, Under Pressure? Pressure was okay, Under, B. Dum, 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 dum. B. That's some white people shit. Again, we didn't fame, fame, and the other one that I said. Those are the only two ones that we really fucked with. All that other Iggy starship bullshit, we didn't fuck with none of that shit, and y'all loved it. Johnny Cash, Johnny fucking the Man in Black, only cause he wore black. Yeah. Um, he was gangster. Yeah, he has some gangster shit right. now. Now that's what I used to Kill like because he used to rap about guns and shit like that. Folsom City Blues. That like. was some hard, and I liked the fact that he used to go to jails and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, he's performing prison. In fact, yeah, yeah the, the Folsom City Blues performed in Folsom Prison. Listen, like. I have a, my mother used to love country music. Mm. Uh, she probably still does to this day. Like, yeah. so I grew up. Listening to country music at right. times, like you know like, what I mean. Like Ray Charles, for example, loved country music and started to do country music. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. But uh, the, the one before him was what Charlie Pride, I think, was the black dude that did um, country music. He was he was like a famous black country music singer and shit. But um, again, you take any white person from any genre of music, I don't hold. None of them in high self-esteem, in high esteem. Like, yo. I mean, you know what? Damn. Rolling Stones were dope. Rolling Stones had some smash. <sighs> you, know, you know who I used to like when I was young? Who's that? Frank Sinatra. He was dope. Frank Sinatra was dope. Being, being a New Yorker, you know you get hyped when you, sit, when you hear New York, New York. What? Come on. Listen, like, like, matter of fact, you know what I think I, I might have liked about Frank Sinatra is that like he sung like a white boy. He wasn't necessarily trying yeah. to sing no. like he was black. No, he was Italian. He, he relished it. He might be the only one that I'm like, OK, <laughs> because I like this style. All yeah. of that yeah, mad yeah. broads, right. fucking Fuck some gangsters. Right. He in might the, be the only one. In fact, if you as a New Yorker. There is no bigger New York anthem than Frank Sinatra's New York, New York. I don't. Jay Z and, and you know and how Keys many are cool, but it yeah. ain't fucking with New York. There's New nothing York. like winning, being at Yankee Stadium, yeah. winning a fucking baseball game, especially a big one, and that shit come on. Right. That's bringing the it's tears out. I don't give a you. fuck who New you are. The tears York. start welling up. New York. <laughs> <laughs> New York. Exactly. Yeah, he might be the only one that I might hold in in, in high self esteem. Okay, you know who I like, and I actually had to. I actually had the privilege of working with this guy. Is Peter Gabriel? Mm, Peter that, Gabriel's dope. Yeah, Peter Gabriel's very dope. Yeah, he's dope. 
Yeah, sledgehammer. But I'm a little biased. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you worked with him? Yeah, I did some some ESPN shit with him. ESPN shit. What do you mean? Like we, uh, he got a song called uh, "Games Without Frontiers." You know yeah. that song? War Without Fears. Right. right. So we kind of remixed that. Uh, he gave me the original tracks to that song. I sampled it, made a hip hop beat out of it, and then we did like an ESPN for the X Games. We did an ESPN like promo type of thing, and I rhymed on it. And oh, was he actually there? Uh well, no, he wasn't actually there, but he directly gave me the tracks. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Like, to, like yeah. he don't work with a lot of people, so they let him know it was me. Da 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 da, and he was like, yeah, and he sent me the right. reels to the shit, and then he sung. He re-sang the hook oh, okay. and all that type of shit, yeah, so. But he he, he lived in London, so. Well, at least, at least we pulled out a Frank Sinatra out of you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. No one else. Um, as a matter of fact, Nat King Cole's probably better than him. <laughs> Move on! <laughs> yeah, but you, you throw Nat King Cole out of the... At a Yankees game, they ain't going to get the same type of response, though. Uh, it was uh, it's the song. It's the song? Yeah, that hit a perfect song with that New a York. Perfect That's song. all the stars are lined up for that song. Stars it was the singer, the, the song, the I instruments, the speed. Today. Everything came together in a beautiful crescendo of a song, and he happened to be the singer. But yeah. if Nat King Cole sing it, I don't know how big it would have been. 